Morning, my dear friends. What a beautiful morning. Rain or shine, I have learned to appreciate each day, especially as you get older. Uh, which reminds me, today's my husband's birthday. So he made it this far. But today is Palm Sunday, a very special day. Palm Sunday is significant because it marks the beginning of Holy Week when Jesus began his journey toward the cross. In each of the Gospels, we find the story of Jesus' triumph and entry into Jerusalem. The people cut palms and waved them in the air, then laid them out on the ground before him as he rode into the city. The palm branch is known to represent goodness and victory, symbolic of the final victory he would soon fulfill over sin and death. But no one knew the full story then. They just knew at that moment, on that day, they longed to give worship and praise to Jesus. I can almost imagine the energy of the moment when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem. The voices cheering and shouting, people trying to see through the crowds, just who was this person? As they called out, Hosanna, they were hailing Christ as king. That word means to save now, and they were waiting for an earthly king. But God's plan was different, as we know, as it so often is. He was providing a way to set us free eternally. Let us pray. Dear God, Thank you for sending your son and paving the way for our lives to be set free through Jesus' death on the cross. Thank you for what Palm Sunday stands for, the beginning of Holy Week, the start of the journey toward the power of the cross, the victory of the resurrection, and the truth that Jesus truly is our King. Father, Palm Sunday is a reminder of the unexpected yet fully anticipated King of Kings. Jesus did not look like the Messiah your people hoped for, 
the way he entered the holy city of Jerusalem on that day, riding a donkey as a significant sign of peace and fulfillment of prophecy, did not align with their expectations of a military conqueror. Much of our daily lives don't align with our expectations, Father. So much of our lives don't make sense. This Palm Sunday, let us embrace the unexpected entrance of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is peace. Let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, children, please join Amanda over here for the Palm Parade. I see the King of Glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. for helping with our Palm Parade. Today is Palm Sunday when we remember that Jesus was walking or riding through the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey and people were waving their palms in the air and saying, Hosanna. 
because Hosanna means save us. So we do the same thing every Palm Sunday um, to remember Jesus' ride into Jerusalem. Well, I'm so glad to be with you guys. It's been a long time since we've been at church, isn't it? A long time, and the sun's out after a lot of rain. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Well, I have some good news. Since we've been at church, something really big has happened. And that's what this sign right here, everybody see this sign? And Lily's putting some little uh, mini roof panels on there. Something really exciting has happened at St. Paul's that I want to tell you guys about. The Church of St. Paul's decided that we are going to get solar panels on one of our roofs, on the roof of one of our buildings. Have you ever seen solar panels on a roof? I know that uh, Robert and Ewan have because they have some on their house. Let's look. I have a picture for you. Can you see right here? You see this house? And look at this on the roof. And what a solar panel does is it gets energy from the sun to give electricity to a whole house. So have you ever seen your parents plug something into the wall? Maybe your TV or a light or you need to charge your iPad or computer for school? We can get energy from the sun for our houses and for our church, and it's much safer for our planet. It's better for our air. It's better for our water. And so the church has decided to get some solar panels on one of our roofs. Now, I have a question. Why would a church care about doing something that's better for our air and water? Why would a church care about that? Any ideas? Why would a church do something that's better for creation? Because we, who do we believe that created the world? Who? God. And why did God create the world? You ever think about that? Why? God created the world as a gift to human beings to care for the earth. So God said, here is this gift of creation, and I'm going to put you in charge of it, and you have to take care of the land and the air and the water, and you have to take care of one another, and you have to take care of all the animals. So we want to get solar panels on our roof so we can take better care of God's earth. Now, to get solar panels on a roof, it costs some money. How much money do you think it costs? $100, a little bit more. What about $40,000? It's like a really nice car. So that helps us put solar panels on the roof, like you see on this picture. It's also going to help us buy a new roof, because it was old. We needed a new one. And we're going to have a little extra money that we can give to another church or another organization so they can start getting some solar power too, so we can spread spread the love. Now, we need $40,000. So all of these, uh, this is a, so you see this is kind of like a roof. This is like the house down here. This is the roof. These are many solar panels. And this is how we're going to track how much money we've raised. So out of $40,000, This past week, we had $15,900 in the bank. That's pretty good. We've been doing it for 12 days, and we have $16,000 in. So every week, Lily helped me a second ago, we're going to add these little panels to help us see how much money we've raised and see we're almost halfway. So next week, we'll see how many more panels we add. Does that sound good? All right, so y'all are going to about to head out with Kate and Miss Kelsey. You're going to take your palm branches with you because you have a special kids activity. Does that sound good? But before we go, do y'all remember the prayer we used to do in children's moments? It says, God be with us till we meet again. Can we say that together? God be with us till we meet again. Amen. All right, guys, you can go with Kelsey and Kate. Thanks. Good morning to this crew. Test, test, can you all hear me? A little bit? 
All right. It is so good to be with you guys in person. So many people are here. I'm thankful that there was a break in the rain with a little sunshine and that the ground wasn't too wet. I know that we are all thankful for virtual worship and for connection via Zoom, but there's nothing like being in person, especially on Palm Sunday as we approach Easter next week. And I'm also thankful for our friends at home. Uh, we are thinking of you too, and we are holding your presence with us in this space. As we enter into a time of prayer for our communities, both locally and globally, let's take a minute of silence to settle into God's presence with us. Creator God, on this Palm Sunday, we join our voices with those from long ago that cried out to Jesus, Hosanna, save us. All of us are here because we long for salvation. We long for healing. We long for wholeness in the midst of a broken world. And we believe that there is hope to be found in you. As we journey through Holy Week, may we not be tempted to rush towards Easter morning. May we slow down and walk with Jesus every step of the way. May we be, may we be reminded that God is present in the darkness and in the suffering, that God made flesh in Jesus has experienced depths of betrayal and human suffering that Jesus knows our pain, the vulnerability of the human condition. Give us the courage not to cower in fear, but to stay awake to God's spirit moving among us. Comforting God, we pray for those who are not with us this morning, for those living with chronic illness, for those recovering from medical procedures, for those in therapy and rehab at home. Our hearts are with them and their loved ones. May they know your love and your presence with them, and may they feel empowered to persevere whatever their circumstance. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers, for always being there in times of joy and difficulty. Empower us to be people of salvation, liberation, and love in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
on on Palm Sunday. What is it that we shout when we wave our palm branches? Hosanna, Hosanna which means save us. Save us, Lord. And uh, I know a lot of us are generally not very good at asking for help or even admitting that we need help. We have a hard time most days saying, save us, asking other people um, to help us out because we prize self-sufficiency and independence. And yet every week when we gather here at the communion table, we are reminded that we thrive in a community where all of us are both needed and needy. That we are interconnected and interdependent on God and on each other, that we are one body in Christ. We need each other to make life whole and fulfilling. We need Jesus to forgive us and to heal us. Because as we know, deep down, whether we admit it or not, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. We all hurt each other sometimes. We all fall short of the good that we want to do. But we can always come to this table asking for Jesus' help without shame or fear because we can trust that when we come to this table and say, Lord, save us, help us, that Jesus will always respond with grace and with love and with a resounding yes. Our hosannas are full of joy because we know that God will answer yes to our cries. So we give thanks as we gather at this table to celebrate God's love. Let us pray. Here at this table, we come to you. We come to you with joy as we meet together in the midst of your glorious creation. We come to you weary from our isolation but with hope in the coming days as we try to resume our services in person. To this table we come. How can we come with enough humbleness, enough confession, and enough thankfulness? You gave us your only son who came to us as a man. He taught us your way. He invites us, the unworthy people, to this table. We remember this day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem not as a conquering hero, but as a humble servant on a donkey. Knowing his days here were few, he did not have a lavish banquet, but a quiet Passover meal with his disciples. He told them and us again about God's everlasting and sacrificial love and how we should love each other. He tried to tell his disciples what was going to happen with his death and resurrection. We know what happened. He promised them and us that through his death we are promised salvation. As we partake of this bread, symbol of your son's broken body, and this cup, symbol of his shed blood, we ask that you bless these symbols of his sacrifice. Amen. Now here at this table, Jesus gave thanks and broke the bread saying, you are my disciples, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And then we take our cups and we remember the words, this is my blood shed for you, drink all of it in remembrance of me. so good to see everybody's here. Uh, we are so thankful for all God has provided for us and all he has done for us. Out of our gratitude for all that God has given us, let us give to God with glad and generous attitude and hearts. You are invited to make offerings to St. Paul's online at 
S T P A U L S dot net, or by mail, or、uh, in the basket on the welcome table. Now let us bless our offerings. Generous God, thank you for the amazing gift of your life and love. Offered to us without condition. Let your example inspire us to share with others in love. Amen. Music today, and a huge thank you. We've said it before, but can't say it enough to our、um, to the Barkers and our folks who've helped us on sound, and to Amanda and Megan and all their tech expertise.、Um, we give great thanks for all the ways that people have been working behind the scenes and in front of the cameras、um, to help us continue to worship together. Um, over the past year,、um, and it is truly a joy to see folks gathered here today to be out in the the sunshine and the breeze.
um, and to also be connected to our folks worshiping at home. I, um, as Amanda was saying in the prayer in our children's moment that we have said for so long, God be with us till we meet again, it takes on new meaning when it has been so long since we have been able to meet um, face to face. So we give thanks for all the ways God has indeed been with us. Our Palm Sunday scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke. Um, this is not always the version of the Palm Sunday story that we read on Palm Sunday. It's a little bit different, um, although it is the same story. So let us hear these words today from Luke 19, verses 36 to 40. As Jesus rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the name, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. My cat is missing her meow. Some of you know I have a little cat, Bianca, and when she opens her mouth, just the faintest little squeak comes out. I'm not sure why she does this because I know that she can meow louder. On a few rare occasions, I have heard her make a louder noise, but most of the time, it sounds like someone has pressed her mute button when she opens her mouth. We all know about mute buttons now. So, Bianca has found other ways to get our attention, like scratching at our legs or jumping in our laps. Um, if we try to sleep too late in the morning past her usual breakfast time, she can be very persistent in figuring out how to wake us up even without meowing. Even though something has silenced her voice, she can still find a way to let us know what she wants. On Palm Sunday each year, we join our voices with a crowd shouting out their praise of Jesus as he enters Jerusalem. Many in the crowd are people that Jesus has healed or fed, who have followed him on his journey towards Jerusalem. Other people may have heard rumors of this uh, powerful teacher and his miraculous acts and have come out from the city to see this great rabbi for themselves. They are filled with hope that here at last is the awaited Messiah who will usher in God's kingdom of peace, who will set them free from oppressive Roman rule. But not everyone is comfortable with these shouts of praise. Some of the Pharisees urge Jesus to silence the voices of the crowd. We don't know exactly why, but we can guess. It might be out of concern for the safety of Jesus and his followers. They may worry that if news of this parade and the crowd hailing Jesus as king gets back to the authorities, that the Romans will respond with violence. And maybe other Jewish pilgrims who are not a part of this procession will be targeted too. And their fears are certainly well-founded because it won't be long before Jesus is arrested and killed. Their calls for silence might stem from their need for control. As the religious leaders, they probably feel it's their duty to keep order among all of the arriving pilgrims for the Passover, to ensure that the festival stays dignified and calm. Or it might be because they are embarrassed by this motley crowd filled with sinners and outcasts. The people most inspired by Jesus are likely those who have needed his help and his message the most 
the formerly blind and sick who he has healed, the foreigners and loose women who he has welcomed, the poor fishermen and the greedy tax collectors that he has called as his disciples. The Pharisees have a more scholarly faith, informed by study and tradition. And so maybe they just don't understand the uncontainable excitement of people whose lives have been changed by Jesus. They can't identify with this organic overflowing of emotion. It might be that they are uncomfortable with the bold assertions that this rabbi riding a donkey could be the divine savior on which God's people have placed their hopes. In their view, I would imagine that such a wild claim would need to be examined a little bit more before people go around shouting it out for everybody to hear. Or maybe it's just that the Pharisees know how fickle the allegiance of the crowd is. And they're trying to quiet them now before they get disillusioned with Jesus and change their shouts to crucify him. Even though the Pharisees are not usually the people we identify with when we read the Gospels, I wonder if, especially in this story, we might resemble more them more than we do the crowds cheering Jesus' arrival. How often do we silence our own voices or the voices of others out of fear, embarrassment, ambivalence, discomfort, or our need for control? We suppress powerful good news, messages that could bring hope and healing, because we're just too worried about what others will think of us or about the consequences of speaking up. For five years, Maya Angelou did not speak. As a little girl, she was assaulted by her mother's boyfriend. She was too ashamed to tell the adults what had happened to her. But one day she confided in her brother. And soon after that, her mother's boyfriend was found beaten to death, probably by Maya's uncles. Horrified that her words had killed a man, she became mute. She wrote, I thought my voice had killed him. I killed that man because I told his name. And then I thought I would never speak again because my voice could kill anyone. Words are indeed powerful, even more powerful than sticks and stones in spite of the familiar saying. After all, Jesus was able to prevent a woman accused of adultery from being stoned just by uttering one phrase in John 8. Do you remember what he said to stop the crowd? Let anyone without sin cast the first stone. Words are powerful. And especially in this age of social media, those with the most posts and the most followers have a great influence. But even less public proclamations can make a big difference. Hateful, racist rhetoric and jokes perpetuate stereotypes that spur some people to violence. Positive encouragement from a teacher or a mentor can give a young person the confidence they need to pursue their dreams. Words are powerful. It was the words of a beloved teacher that finally helped Maya Angelou reclaim her voice. Bertha Flowers knew that young Maya loved to read, and so she helped her develop her appreciation for literature. But she convinced Maya that speaking the words out loud was the only way they could truly come alive. You do not love poetry until you speak it, she told the teenager. And so inspired by Mrs. Flowers, Maya began reciting poetry. And she experienced the power of words flowing from her lips. 
And as we know, Maya Angelou went on to become not only one of the most popular and influential poets of our time, but a great teacher herself who mentored many students right down the road at Wake Forest University. Our voices have a powerful and lasting impact. And so sometimes, like young Maya, knowing how powerful they are, we might be tempted to stay silent. But silence is not a neutral stance. Silence is not the same thing as peace, especially when the truth needs to be spoken. Sometimes staying silent allows violence or injustice to persist. The Pharisees thought that silencing the crowds would achieve peace. But Jesus knew that only speaking out the truth would enable God's peace to reign. And nothing could silence the truth of who he was and what he could do. If the people didn't proclaim Jesus' coming, then the stones themselves would cry out. Jesus here is quoting from the prophet Habakkuk, who gets into an argument with God. Habakkuk is frustrated because all around him, wickedness and oppression seem to be winning. And he wonders why God allows such bad things to happen to the vulnerable people of Judah. God assures him that the arrogant and greedy people who seem to be winning now will not prevail in the end. Saying, alas, for you who get evil gain for your house, setting your nest on high to be safe from the reach of harm. You have devised shame for your house by cutting off many peoples. The very stones will cry out from the wall, and the plaster will respond from the woodwork. Like Habakkuk, we might wonder where God is when we look around us and see so much pain and injustice in our world. Mass shootings, persistent racism, immigrants fleeing violence and poverty, hunger and inequity even in our own community. We may be tempted to stay silent because we don't think that what we have to say can make a difference. We might be uncomfortable drawing attention to ourselves or fear creating conflict. We might worry that we'll say the wrong thing and unintentionally offend someone. We may not know what to say to convince people that the ways of love, of peace, of resurrection are indeed stronger than division and guns and death. We may even begin to wonder if it's true. We may feel like we have lost our voices and retreat into silence. Now silence can be a good thing. Silence can be life-giving and nourishing when it is a spiritual practice that helps us make space to listen for God's voice. But silence that is rooted in fear and shame becomes a tool of those who want to do us harm. It allows injustice to continue unchecked. It prevents God's word from flowing through us. God has given you a unique and powerful voice to use for good. Imagine if Maya Angelou had let fear silence the incredible gift of her poetry. Imagine if Moses had let his fear of stuttering stop him from demanding freedom from Pharaoh. Imagine if the many voices who spoke up for civil rights and women's suffrage were too intimidated to challenge those people who said they didn't count. Imagine if Amanda had given in to the voices who told her that you can't be female and gay and preach. 
we would be missing out on wonderful gifts for ministry. Imagine all the times that fear has threatened to stop someone from standing up to a bully on the playground or from using their musical talent to draw us all closer to God. The good news of God cannot be silenced. Whatever stands in its way, Christ's love will overcome. But your voice is an important way that God is able to speak God's truth, God's love and healing into the world. You may not be a policy expert. You may not feel as eloquent as a poet. But like the disciples who were lining the road to Jerusalem, you have an experience of God's love. You have a longing for the kind of peace and wholeness that Jesus promises. And you can draw people's attention to the hope that another way is possible. Jesus' message will always find a way to be made known, even if the stones themselves have to cry out. This is an important reminder as we move into Holy Week in the days ahead. When Jesus is betrayed, arrested, crucified, and buried. We can trust that even then, from the quiet of the tomb, that the word will emerge to tell the world what God can do. The story of Jesus' liberating, life-giving love that makes all things new is always finding new ways to be told. And so let us be a part of telling that story. It's so good.
of thankful for our time of worship this morning, uh, the opportunity to share space with one another. It's brought a lot of joy to my heart, and I hope it's done the same for you. Um, as we conclude today, you are invited to take your palm branches home with you. If you want a reminder of our time together this morning throughout Holy Week, you can also drop them back off uh, to Cindy at the welcome table. Traditionally, we use the palms from Palm Sunday to create the ashes for Ash Wednesday. So they will, they will have a purpose if you leave them here with us. Um, two important and fun activities following today's worship. The first is some of our youth are recording um, scenes for our Easter pageant, which will premiere on April 11th. So we have a pizza snack for youth who are staying after, and uh, parents, we should be done by 1 o'clock. So it'll only be about an hour for us to record a couple scenes. Youth, you can meet Megan and Kelsey and myself with the pizza down at the white tables near the playground. We also have a very convenient opportunity for folks to help spread the word um, about St. Paul's creation care efforts, including our solar array project and community composting. Anne is at the uh, solar project table, and she has these postcards that we've made that introduce our neighbors uh, to St. Paul's and that tell about some of those creation care efforts. She also has a list of streets in the area with the estimated number of houses, so it's really easy to grab a stack of postcards, uh, know what streets you're assigned, and you can walk around or drive around right after the service or sometime this week. Um, there are instructions about legal and illegal ways to deliver those postcards. So everything you need to know, Anne has that information. And finally, a reminder that there are several ways, both in person and virtually, that you can worship with us through Holy Week. Um, this Thursday, we will have our traditional Monday Thursday virtual worship with Community UCC at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Just like Ash Wednesday, there's the 6.30 optional gathering uh, for fellowship and discussion ahead of time. Then on Friday, we have self-guided worship stations uh, here on St. Paul's campus. Uh, they will be uh, ready to go from, or kind of open from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and then again from 6 to 8 p.m. Those stations are for all ages. They are kid-friendly, so you're invited to come by and take some time on Good Friday to walk through those worship stations. Um, if you prefer to stay at home, we are also going to include uh, the information about those worship stations in the midweek email so that you can walk through those worship stations at home. Um, so no matter what, you can experience uh, Good Friday. And then a week from today, we will gather again in this space um, to celebrate Easter. As our tradition, you're invited to bring flowers and pin those to the wire cross that we will have. At 10 a.m., we will have coffee and donuts um, handed out in a very COVID-safe uh, manner uh, for people to enjoy a time of fellowship. At 10.30, we will have an Easter egg hunt for our kids, so kids can bring their baskets. We'll also have some here. And then at 11 o'clock, our outdoor and virtual worship. So a lot of things to look forward to, a lot of exciting uh, life-giving things for our community. And now, as we offer today's benediction, I invite you to join me by reading the bold lines either on the screen or in your bulletin, and I will read the non-bold. Let us leave our worship, emboldened to break the chains of injustice, apathy, despair, and even death. May the Savior of the world set us free from sin and self-deception. Liberate us, O oh Lord, to live and love like you. Our worship is over. Let our service begin. Amen. <laughs>